Hi, and uh, welcome to the world of fractions. Today, I want to first of all have a look at equivalent fractions, um, define them and have a look at how we calculate them. I then want to take that skill and use it in order to simplify fractions. Now, this is something that's useful as it allows us to completely answer a question in an exam or a test. Um, I hope you find this useful. Let's start by having a look at the shape on the right hand side. As you can see, it is just a square and I have already divided the square into two equal parts. Each one of those is a half. So let's just start by shading in one half of the square. Now, one half, one fraction. But I then want to do something to it. And that is roughly about halfway up there. I want to divide the square again. Now, we have a square that's been divided into four pieces. So if we're having a look at a fraction, you would say that it's been divided into quarters, four on the bottom. But have a look at how many pieces are now shaded in. One at the top here, one at the bottom. Therefore, as a fraction of the shaded area, we have now got two out of four. But as you can clearly see, it is still a half shaded in. So that must mean that two quarters is the same as a half. And that, quite simply, is what we call equivalent fractions. So, big word, and really all it means is equal. Two quarters is equal to one half. Let's take this a little stage further just to see if we could make it a little clearer. I'm going to split this again. And again, I'm being as accurate as I can. But I've now broken this down into smaller segments. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces. And out of those eight, one, two, three, four of them, four out of eight, are shaded in. But we still haven't changed the amount of the overall shape that is shaded. It is still a half. So four eighths must also be equivalent to one half and two quarters. I'm going to take it one stage further and I'm going to put a line down there and a line down the centre of there. So we've got to the point where this square has been broken up and now it's been broken up into 16 smaller squares. Out of those 16, eight have been shaded in. Therefore, because we can still see that it's only half of the overall shape, then eight out of 16 must also be an equivalent. Now, I've written the set of fractions out again. These are the ones that we've just decided are equivalents. In other words, they're all the same. But I want to have a look at what has actually happened to the numbers in these fractions. Let's have a look at these first two. We agreed that two quarters is the same as a half. But let's have a look what actually happened mathematically. If we take the one, what has happened there is it's been multiplied by two. One times two is two. If we take the two on the bottom, that one has also been multiplied by two. Now this gives us the rule for finding equivalent fractions. If you have a fraction and you multiply the top and the bottom numbers by the same number, you will find another equivalent. Let's look at another example. Let's say I have got the fraction three over five. To find equivalents, 
I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. And just for this example, it doesn't matter what number I pick. So I'm going to pick three. So we'll multiply the top and the bottom by three. Three times three is nine. And five times three is 15. Therefore, three fifths and nine fifteenths are equivalent fractions. Just going back to the top of the page for a second, we had a look at those two, but just to confirm our theory, let's have a look at the relationship between the first one and the last one. One times eight equals eight, and two times eight equals 16. So again, we've confirmed that those are equivalents. We've discovered what equivalent fractions are. I want to talk about a practical use for this uh, that comes in very useful in tests and exams. And the process is known as simplifying. Simply fying. Let's have a look at a little question. This says 18 out of 24 people prefer coffee to tea. That may well be the start of a question in a test. And what they want to know is what fraction that is. But they also want the fraction to be quoted in its simplest form. OK, so what they are asking us to do is to simplify a fraction. Now, with this particular question, 18 out of 24, well, as a fraction, we would actually just write that as 18 out of 24. But when we are asked to simplify or to give the answer in its simplest form, which is a very common phrase, they are giving us a clue. They are saying, OK, well done, you've got a fraction there. But actually, those numbers could be simplified or brought down to lower numbers. Now, the way we do this is to work in the opposite direction to the way we were going earlier on in this video. Before, we were multiplying the top and bottom number. Now, in order to make the numbers smaller, we have to divide. And the trick is to look at the 18 and the 24. Think about your times tables and come up with a number that will divide exactly into 18 and 24. And one of those numbers you may decide is a six. They are both in the six times table. So. If you've seen that, the thing to do is have a go and divide them both by 6. So 18 divided by 6 is 3 and 24 divided by 6 is 4. So 18 24 when it is simplified, comes all the way down to 3 quarters. And that is its simplified form. Now this process can be done in a number of ways and it actually depends on just how good you are at your times tables let me show you what i mean i'm going to put a fraction on here uh, and i'll use 48 over 60. now i'm going to write this three maybe even four times down the board just to show you what options you have when you are trying to simplify a fraction. Now, have a look at this top one here, and you're trying to work out what times table these two numbers fit in. It may well be that the only times table you can think of is the two times table. Well, that's absolutely fine, because what you would do is divide that by two, and divide that by two, and if you do that, you will end up with 24 over 30. Then again, 
always have another look. 24 over 30, they will divide by 2 as well. So I'm going to go again. And this is what you do when you are simplifying. You keep trying till you get as far as you possibly can. Here we go. 12, 24 divided by 2. And 15 is 30 divided by 2. I've now come down to 12 fifteenths. Now, I can't divide those two by two. What might I try? Let's have a look at three. Yes, it works. 12 divided by three is four, and 15 divided by three is five. I've come all the way down to four fifths. Now that was one way of doing it, and the answer is perfectly good. What you might have possibly done is had to look at these and said, hang on a minute, these two are actually on the four times table. So you might have divided them by four. And of course you can do that because 48 divided by four is 12 and 60 divided by four is 15. So effectively you are back up here and they will go down again and you'll end up with four fifths. It may well be that you've decided that actually both these two will divide by three and you decide to go in that direction. 48 divided by three is 16. 60 divided by three is 20. Now that's a fraction we haven't seen so far. So, if we are at 16 divided by 20, I can divide those two by 2, and I would get 8 over 10, and divide them by 2 again, and I get 4 fifths. If you are good at your times tables, you may have realised that 48 and 60 are actually both in the 12 times table. So you could divide the top and the bottom by 12. 48 divided by 12 is 4. And 60 divided by 12 is 5. So, at the end, whichever way you did this, you have ended up with exactly the same answer. So the rule is, look at the top and the bottom. Decide for yourself... Can you find the number that you can divide them both by? If you can, do it. Once you've done it, look again. Can you go again? Yes or no. And if you can, keep going till you get to that last possible set of numbers. The top one here took us one, two, three steps. The bottom one took us one step. But at the end of the day, we all came to the same answer. It is worth mentioning that not all fractions can be simplified. Let's say, for instance, you have a fraction of 12 over 47. Try as you might, you will not find a number that will divide into 12 and 47. There just isn't one. So in this case, it can't be simplified. So let's have a quick summary. If we have a fraction... Let us say 4 over 10. If we want to find an equivalent larger fraction, we multiply the top and bottom by the same number. And in doing so, we get a larger numbered fraction that is an equivalent. If we are looking to simplify, then we are dividing the top and the bottom by the same number and we will find a smaller but equivalent fraction and that is simplifying and equivalence. So that's equivalence and simplifying fractions. Um, if you found that useful please hit the subscribe button and that will give you access to a number of other videos on fractions as well as other areas of maths. Um, I hope you enjoyed, thank you.